food might be a great source of joy and connection with your family and friends, or it might feel like a daily struggle. No matter what your relationship with food is, though, everyone can benefit from learning about nutrition, especially people with type 1 diabetes. In fact, understanding how the food you eat affects your body and blood sugar can help you make choices about what, when, and how much you eat that leave you feeling free rather than restricted. Because food is a major source of glucose, managing diabetes involves balancing what you eat with bolus insulin whenever you eat to keep your glucose in range. And to strike a healthy nutritional balance, it's helpful to know what major nutrients or macronutrients are in the food that fuels your body. You've probably heard macronutrient words thrown around in grocery stores, on restaurant menus, or even in this video series, even if you didn't know they were macronutrients. There are three main categories, proteins, fats, and carbohydrates. Protein, found in foods like animal products, lentils, and tofu, gets broken down into building blocks called amino acids, which your body can use to do things like build new muscle tissue. But if you eat a lot of protein at once, the extra amino acids floating around can get converted into glucose. Protein just takes longer to digest than carbs, so you may see an uptick in your blood glucose level a few hours later. This might be surprising if you were taught that only carbs affect your blood sugar. Fats. Fats have gotten a bad rap over the years that they don't deserve. They're not inherently good or bad for you. Eating healthy fats can be a great way to keep your blood glucose steady while enjoying yourself. Fats are found in creamy foods like oils, butter, avocados, and nuts. In your body, fats are a source of energy, are necessary to make important hormones, and help absorb vitamins and move nutrients around. On their own, eating fats in small amounts will have little to no effect on your blood glucose. But after a large, rich, fatty meal, even without many carbs, you'll notice your blood glucose starts to rise a few hours later. Like proteins, fats take longer to digest. That brings us to carbohydrates, or carbs, which include sweet things, but also savory foods, often staples like bread, rice, potatoes, or grains that get broken down into glucose, some faster than others. The key to understanding how carbs affect your blood glucose is often how many you eat at one time, not how sweet they taste. So a good basic strategy is to match the bolus doses to the amount of carbs you're going to eat. Another strategy to keep your blood glucose balanced is aiming for lower carb meals, especially in the morning, thanks to changes in hormone levels. So for meals with no carbs, try starting with a small dose of one or two units, measure your blood glucose, and adjust next time. You might be familiar with carb counting, which is a useful skill for type 1 management. But carb counting can also be tricky to do precisely or suck the joy out of eating for some people. You can use an insulin carb ratio to calculate a dose of bolus insulin that should roughly match what your body needs for the amount of carbs you're eating, if you know that number. We've included some resources in the video description to help you on your journey. That being said, it's super important not to get carried away with carb counting. A simpler way to start might be to estimate how many carbs are in a meal and decide if you need a small, medium, or large dose of insulin. Trial and error is the way to go here. Your blood glucose levels will tell you how close you were and whether you need to fine tune your estimate. Different combinations of macronutrients can also have a big effect on your blood glucose levels. For example, if you eat some mashed potatoes with steak, that's a balance of some carbs from the potatoes with protein and fat from the steak. Combining these macronutrients can delay digestion and slow the release of glucose into your bloodstream, preventing big swings. This is especially true for fats. Lots of carbs combined with lots of fats may raise your blood sugars for hours. I'm looking at you, pizza. Whether you love meal prepping or struggle to find food enjoyable, being thoughtful about nutrition can make a huge difference in managing type 1. By balancing your macronutrients, especially carbs, with your bolus insulin doses, you can better understand changes in your blood glucose and avoid some unexpected swings. And besides, feeling empowered in your body, maybe, just maybe, eating might become a little more fun. Three key takeaways. Foods contain different amounts of protein, fat, and carbohydrates. Eating carbs has the biggest impact on your blood glucose levels, where protein and fats contribute to. 
One strategy to balance your blood glucose and bolus insulin is by carb counting and figuring out how much bolus you need for the amount of carbs you plan to eat. Eating meals with smaller amounts of carbohydrates and eating carbs in combination with other macronutrients, especially fats, can help prevent big swings. Thanks for watching. Hope you found this video helpful. See you next time.